So, Manny, we have Manny, we have some questions that have been that have been raised, um, and I think it's important that we kind of go through them. Uh, I find it very interesting when you look at the different um, factors that your body is really a living organism, and what cannabis is doing is complementing it. And sometimes in complementing it, what it really does is it creates some side effects that people really don't expect. So I think this is what we wanted to be able to bring up today. Now, let me, uh, let's go through some of the quick questions that are out there. First question we have is, can having an ostomy affect how much of the terpenes enter one system? Ostomy is a, is a surgical procedure. Um, when one has uh, a surgical procedure uh, that has to do with your, your, your stomach lining, uh, what the question becomes, can terpenes enter your system if that happens? you have any comments on that, Manny? Sure. So actually, it, it all depends on the method of consumption or route of administration that you're using. Um, if you're using the sublingual, it may not have that much of an effect or non-effect, if you will, as it's more absorbed in the mucosis of the mouth and, and the lining of the mouth under the tongue. Um, if you're inhaling it, that's hitting the lungs. Uh, if you're actually trying to take it orally, then that might have an effect. But then there's also different products out there that are encapsulated as they're right. defined, which means that they're faster absorbed or more rapidly absorbed. So there's, there's a lot of different factors that really go into that, Mark. It, we would have to get a little bit more specific on diet and other factors as well. Sure. But again, this has, this just creates a hole in the abdominal, so, abdominal wall. Um, can it, terpenes will still be absorbed. Uh, it, it's still going to be effective, and I wouldn't I wouldn't stay away from them because of that. Uh, I would simply just pay attention to your react your body's reaction to it, how how strongly it affects your system. It could be more, it could be less. Again, it depends on your particular situation. So, uh, I would time. actually also Mark be more. Uh, I I would be more aware of the cannabinoids being absorbed rather than the terpenes. Right. Um, being that terpenes are usually going to come in less than 8% of the total product weight. Um, yeah. Those usually get evaporate or get absorbed very rapidly. It's more the cannabinoids that you want to make sure you absorb with the terpenes as well. Sure. Let's turn to the next question. It says, is there such a thing as permanent tolerance that won't reserve, reverse? I'm not aware of any permanent uh, issues with cannabis. Your thoughts, Manny? I have heard and read some dialogue on this um, that one can plateau and it would be irreversible though i haven't had any of my uh clients have that specific issue basically what they would do is take the holiday or tolerance break and after about three days sometimes up to a week um they would get that tolerance reduced however it will never be baseline again or i haven't seen anybody get baseline again where they're almost brand new to it again that tolerance mm -hmm. will spike up very rapidly again if you start up. Right. So it's actually your body accepting the benefits of cannabis. That's what you're really talking about here. Yes. So, yes sir. Next question is, why can cannabis improve or worsen anxiety symptoms? Uh, a lot of it has to do with the fact that the receptors that cannabis is addressing are really open to being able to use cannabinoids to be able to either help you get over the anxiety or race sometimes especially in the case of thc it can create anxiety your thoughts man i completely agree um and to to go a little bit further with that as you and amy described in the presentation environment can play a big role if you're new to it if you're not new to it the terpenes particularly can play a big role um particularly limonene and alpha pinene combined can really induce anxiety um, whatever's causing your anxiety, if it's stemming from PTS or PTSD, um, if you haven't confronted that yet or come to terms with that yet. So there's a lot of factors that go into this. And that's why, just like you and Amy suggested, starting low, going slow is primarily where you want to uh, be at if you're dealing with anxiety. And definitely mm -hmm. inhalation, if you're up to it, would probably be the best factor as it's yeah. fast in. And then it's fast out. It won't last more than about an hour and a half. And then you could broaden your horizon from there. Yeah, because a lot of people who get who, who are suffering from anxiety, they want to get relief right now. And that's why the vaping uh, really works really well. Uh, although you can use other routes of administration, a lot of times people want that instant gratification that's really there. And that's what it's all about. Let's run to the next question. I think here's an interesting one. Where can I find information on using cannabis for fibromyalgia? We actually have some videos that are in our YouTube channel on using fibromyalgia and cannabis. 
that you may want to take a look at. I think that's going to be one of the better places to be able to go look for that. I think also, um, if you're naturally, if you're looking for the scientific part of having fibromyalgia and cannabis work together, you have um, uh, PubMed that's out there. Can, Manny, do you know of any other uh, sources that people can look at? No, those are fabulous sources, Mark. Um, that's pretty much where I turn to now as well. However, I, I would like to emphasize that when you're using marijuana or cannabis to treat any ailments or to help um, get a better quality of life from your ailments, mm -hmm. this is something that physicians don't regularly study as it's federally illegal. Any dispensary that you go to is not going to have a medical doctor or professional in there. They're all subject matter experts. And the reason that is, is because cannabis is going to affect you differently. What they're looking to find out is what symptoms are you trying to relieve or what activities are you trying to be a part of. And based off of that and where your pain is specifically, they may recommend, not prescribe, mm -hmm. but recommend certain products that may be beneficial for your well-being. Sure. And I should point out that we did the fiber, when we put together the fibromyalgia webinar or in video, we actually went to sources outside the United States, uh, mainly uh, Israel and also to uh, Spain to be able to find information about this. So there is research that's done, just not in the United States right now. So, uh, next question, Manny, is it says, I think Manny was talking about having seen a patient treated with Marinol. Uh, how is this different from marijuana? That is a great question. Uh, first and foremost, Marinol is going to be a synthetic pharmaceutical. There are no terpenes that's really driving that bus, and that is going to be the difference between marijuana or cannabis. Um, obviously, the marijuana or cannabis plant is going to be all natural. It's going to have terpenes that are natural cannabis-derived terpenes or reintroduced botanical-derived terpenes. Either way, still all natural. And those terpenes, along with the cannabinoids, along with the flavonoids, give you that full synergistic entourage effect where you can actually almost dictate the effects or the relief it's going to provide. Whereas mm -hmm. Marinol is straight synthetic THC, very potent. And though it may give relief, it may compound on another issue that you're having because there's nothing really driving which way it's going other than the chemistry within your body, which is probably going to be off as Marinol is usually from the patients I've been working with, uh, dealing with cancer. So they're already going through certain treatments where their body chemistry is really out of whack. And then you add a, uh, a synthetic chemical to that, whether it's identical to TAC or not, and that's not going to have the best uh, effect that you're looking for. Whereas marijuana or cannabis is going to have those terpenes, flavonoids, synergistic effect, get better relief. Sure. And I should point out that if you're going to use Marinol or if you've been recommended to use Marinol, do it under the guidance of a doctor. It is very strong and you really need a, a doctor's advice to be able to work uh, work with you on your tolerance level and more importantly, the amount of dosing and the type of Marinol that you're using to help you with your particular situation. Um, let's take some live questions that have been have been brought up. Um, uh, we had an anonymous question, uh, person asked, why do some products keep me awake instead of helping me sleep? Uh, I think a lot of this has to do with the THC level, Manny. It could definitely have a lot to do with the THC level. It's also going to depend on the category uh, variety that you're using, whether it's an indica sativa or hybrid. Typically, sativas are more like a sugar substitute, sativia, um, uplifting, energetic, whereas indicas, you think of in the couch, couch lock, sedative, relaxing and then your hybrid somewhere right there in the middle. But all of that is dictated by the terpenes and what is actually given in there. Also the route of administration. If you're using an oral where you're taking it straight down to the stomach, you're not getting much absorption in the mouth, usually the stomach acid will destroy those terpenes upon impact. Therefore, you're having more of a THC heavy product, which is gonna relax and sedate you. If you're inhaling it, you wanna look for certain terpenes that's gonna be uplifting. Or as you're suggesting for sleep, you want something heavy in terpenes that'll help you sleep, such as linalool, myrcene, um, or something to that effect. Sure. And I should point out the graphics at the bottom that you see is what they call the onset time of the different routes of administration that you're using. And also the other is how long, actually the duration, how long it actually works. And you can say that things like gummies and things like that, are, or excuse me, the edibles, the oral products have four to 10 hour uh, uh, durations, but it could take again, two hours to work. Where Topicals, vapes, uh, flour, all work almost instantaneously. And well, the important factor to that, Mark, is as it suggested, if you go to our falling asleep and staying asleep uh, with medical cannabis, there's a big difference. If you're having trouble falling asleep, 
uh, a vape, an inhalant, a topical, a sublingual might be more beneficial. Whereas if you're having trouble staying asleep, you might want to take something oral as it will take longer to take effect, but it'll last longer to help keep you asleep through the night. Okay. And I should point out, I, I have some trouble sleeping. I, um, I actually make what my wife refers to as magic brownies. Um, so I make uh, cannabis-based brownies. And I typically take one before bed. It takes me about 45 minutes to an hour before it actually kicks in. But it helps me fall asleep and it helps me stay asleep all night. Uh, so it makes a big, big, big difference. Um, and again, you can use uh, chocolates, gummies, things like that to really help. It's really out there. Um, let's jump to the next question that's there. Um, one of the questions that was asked is, it, so is it better to vape or use uh, gummies? I have chronic pain and fibromyalgia. Really, I think it depends on what you're comfortable with. I'd agree. Um, I would go as far as to say use both. Um, if you're having that pain immediately and you need immediate relief, um, use an inhalant, a vape, flowers, or sublingual, um, and then follow it by a gummy, chocolate, or otherwise, because by the time that inhalant starts wearing off, that oral is going to start kicking in and give you more longevity and relief. Um, and mm -hmm. that's basically the way you want to use it, along with the biphasic effect. You want to kind of keep that balance in homeostasis. You don't want to ever be too high or too stoned. You don't want to be without cannabis in your system completely. You want to kind of stay right in the middle. So mm -hmm. using in tandem an inhalant with the oral or sublingual or topical is perfectly fine and beneficial. Sure. It, it's kind of interesting. It's it, it all kind of works together. And this kind of fits into the next question that is being asked is, what combination of terpenes would help depression and anxiety uh, as well as pain? High THC causes me jitters, heart palpitations. Your thoughts, Manny? Um, great question. And you don't have to have a high THC product. Actually, preferably, if you're using it for a daytime effect, then I would use a one-to-one -one or higher CBD product um, with limonene for your anxiety and b caryophylline for your pain. Um, right. Either one of those are not going to get you euphoric. You should get a little uplift boost, if you will, for your depression. And that b caryophylline is really going to work as an analgesic for your pain, particularly in your peripherals like your arms or your legs, your hands, toes, and feet um, sure. and fingers. Um, but if, if I don't, I wouldn't suggest that it's the THC that's necessarily okay. giving you the jitters. It may be the high THC product with certain terpenes like limonene or more specifically alpha pinene that's giving you that jitters. And if or when that does happen, go to your favorite pastime. If you like to play games on your phone, read a book, watch a specific movie, talk to your best friend, husband, spouse, whomever. Usually within about five to 10 minutes after you distract yourself, that'll go away. And the more of a tolerance you build to that, the more naturally you'll feel with it. And that'll go away as well. Yeah. And I should point out that um, you talk about using a, a higher concentration of CBD versus THC. Uh, that uh, CBD addresses inflammation. And in many cases, that's the that's what causes pain. And by reducing the inflammation, we'll reduce the pain. I found that out when I had my knee surgery. Uh, I had knee replacement. I found that I was using, if I used a higher concentration of CBD, my pain was going down. CBD doesn't necessarily address pain. But what it addressed was the inflammation causing the pain. And I think that's one of the other things you might want to take. A, don't shy away from using CBD products. Manny, this is one that's right up your alley. I'm taking three-fourths of, of a Soothe dropper for our, or rheumatoid arthritis, but getting no relief. What do you recommend? Well, there's a couple of options here. Um, how long are you holding that Soothe dropper under your tongue as a tincture? Um, are you taking a fatty snack just before it, or are you having a meal right after it? Always remember that cannabis marijuana is a fatty molecule, and for it to be ingested, it's best with fatty materials. That's why you usually see it in cookies, brownies, and chocolates, and so forth. Um, you never really want to have a big meal before bed. That's why I suggested a snack before, a cup of yogurt, um, some peanut butter, avocado, and one of those health parts on that. Um, or if you know you're about to have dinner and you're going to go to bed a few hours later, take it right before dinner. Another thing that you might want to uh, use is uh, a topical. Um, wherever you're having the, that point. slight pain from your RA, yeah. you might want to use that topical. Um, and then the, the, the three quarters of the stew dropper may not necessarily need that much if you're swallowing it that fast. Um, I would probably mix it with uh, a drink if you like, if you're using that, or some ice cream, maybe dessert after dinner. That'll make it more effective. And then the last thing is how long have you been using it? 
it's very important to understand that CB may, CBD may take about maybe two to three weeks sometimes to really positive, positively charge in your body and provide that significant effect you're looking for. Sure. And I think that, I think that the topical is actually a very good idea because that helps a lot with rheumatoid arthritis. And I also want to point out, have you taken a holiday lately? In other words, if you used it for six months in a row and you haven't taken a, 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 a break from using it, please do so. Take a day or a day and a half, maybe two days, uh, and then you'll find that you might, you might, your body will be able to be more receptive to uh, the cannabis product than it was before because you're reacting and you're awakening the endocannabinoid system in your body. Uh, next Absolutely. question is a good one. It says, I live with chronic pain from degenerative disc disease, scoliosis, stenosis, and painful neuropathy. Best terpene for nerve pain. I think there's two things to take a look at here. I mean, I'd like to comment on. Uh, the best terpene might be beta caryophyllene, which I think is really important. But I think also um, some CBD mixed with THC, both using together, can help quite a bit. Oh, absolutely. That synergistic effect will make a significant impact. Um, of course, you, you called it beta caryophyllene is my favorite as an analgesic. Mm -hmm. um, if you're looking for, if there's muscle tension with that as well, which usually does come when you're dealing with scoliosis or stenosis as you're trying to compensate, using the topical high in B-caryophylline and very high in eucalyptol as well. Mm -hmm. So it can open right. up those pores and get into the, those joints where you're having that pain uh, will make right. a significant impact. And then again, high CBD products, if you can't tolerate or don't want to tolerate the THC effect, ICBD will definitely help as an anti-inflammatory, which will have a significant impact. Sure. And then the other issue is to pay attention to the source of the pain, because sometimes if it's um, if it's a if it's an injury, like in my case, this the, the herniated disc in my neck, you know, I know that I can it's not going to go away. Or if it's something that's temporary, where I just bang my arm, my sh my shoulder, or, or something like that, I know that there's something that it, it'll actually heal over time. And that's where you got to pay attention to the, you know, the treatment methods that you're using. So source of the pain, I think, is an important part of this whole thing. Um, comments? Any other comments you want to make on this, uh, Manny? No, I think that one covered it. Um, I will suggest that it is different. One of the biggest things I liked about the presentation tonight was how it, it specified between the difference between men and women, um, particularly yeah. dealing with hormones as yeah. uh, cannabinoids typically help balance out hormones. And that's why there's a difference. I, I, my, my daughter's a card holder. My mother's a card holder. And I <laughs> kind of use them as guinea pigs sometimes when I ask them questions on effect and how things treated them. And I've noticed a significant difference. So please continue to do your research. I hope we were able to reach people tonight. And uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Great. Well, listen, um, first of all, I want to thank everybody for joining us tonight. Uh, hopefully this has been helpful to you. I think uh, there's a lot of information here. You'll be getting a follow-up email that has a link to this video. It'll have a link to the presentation itself and some backup information as well, as well as how to get a hold of Manny. Um, I do want to point out, uh, please feel free to check out some of our other webinars that are coming up. I know uh, we're going to be doing one uh, next week, which is going to be on uh, the terpenes. Very important. Terpenes has been one of our popular webinars that are out there. And then at the end of the month, we're doing one on exploring cannabinoids. So we're going to cover the whole spectrum of medical cannabis. And then in the month of December, just in time for the holidays, we'll be talking about a semi-glutide weight loss program that's safe. And that's the key. It's a safe weight loss program. So again, I want to thank everybody for joining us. And again, uh, take a look at the Marijuana Aware YouTube channel. Uh, it's going to help you be able to find not only information about this, but other conditions, and uh, hopefully we'll give you some basics in how to use medical cannabis effectively. Manny, any any uh, final comments? I'd just like to say thank you, Mark, as always, for having me. Thanks to Leah and Lee in the background, and of course, the audience for paying attention and sticking with us through this webinar. It's always a pleasure, and I hope we were able to help you out a little bit. Please join us next week when we talk about terpenes, and uh, we look forward to your comments in the YouTube channel.